Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Before the soldering relations are taken, the ponic is secured to the model with sticky wax to make sure the facing has a proper relationship with the ridge. When this is done, then the relationship is examined from the lingual surface. You'll note the knockoff lugs and the position of the soldering lugs. The soldering lugs have been lubricated with flux. Next, we'll be adding Duralay to this lingual surface. The surface is wetted with the monomer and then small increments of Duralay are built up on the lingual surface, taking care to keep it away from the surface of the silver die and just keeping it contained on the gold casting. We will flow the Duralay around the knockoff lug. You will note the lingual area is rather minimal and you can see the importance of the knockoff lug in holding this Duralay together. The Duralay is carefully flowed across the ponic and onto the cuspid casting and then around the cuspid knockoff lug. It's important to keep the Duralay away from the pins of the pin facing. Should the Duralay get in this area, it could lock the facing in place and make it difficult to remove. When the Duralay has lost its sheen at this particular point, then a piece of paper clip is placed on the Duralay. An old burr is also useful for this purpose. The purpose of this metal reinforcement is to give rigidity to the soldering relations. It is less likely to fracture or bend or distort. More Duralay is added on top of the paper clip to secure it firmly to the soldering relationship. Antiflux is applied to the internal portions of the castings. Only a minimal amount of antiflux need be applied in these areas. The purpose of this is to keep the solder from flowing onto the internal surfaces of these castings. A narrow strip is placed inside the potty casting and on the distal finishing line on the internal portion of the pin facing, taking care not to get anaflux on the external portion of the casting, and a small amount on the mesial groove of the cuspid. This then will be invested in soldering investment. The Duralay will be burned off and then soldered. We've invested the bridge and uh, burned off the Duralay in the usual manner. You'll notice that we have anaflux lingual surface of this anterior bridge. And note, please, that we did not use a lot of antiflux, just a strip on the central incisor, on the ponic, and on the cuspid itself. And you'll also notice that we've kept the antiflux away from the gold solder joint area so that we can flow the solder in. One of the problems that students have gotten into in soldering their other bridges, they place the antiflux too close, too close to the solder area, and then it repels the solder as you try to flow it. Now, in using a brush flame, we're trying to get this as hot and red as possible. And as soon as our crowns start glowing, then we will be ready to flow the solder on the bridge. Now, you'll notice the access here will be directly, directly on the linguals of these uh, crowns. Now it's getting nice and hot and we will flow the solder right in in a proximal there and reheat that a little bit to make sure that she flows well around that and also 
this distal area. You can see it flow. A little more here. And you notice that if you get this hot enough, if you get it hot enough, the solder will flow as soon as you touch it, and it will not go beyond the areas, as you see here, where we have it antifluxed. Now we're soldering with a propane torch, and the, the uh, heat is not the same. I just want to reheat this joint a little bit to make sure that the solder flows all the way around the joint itself. And now that's completed, we'll just let it cool. The next step then is to allow this to cool and to break the investment, quench it, and then pickle it, and then we will then proceed to the finishing, the final finishing procedure. After the bridge has been soldered, the excess solder and the knockoff lugs will be removed. The solder usually is rather bulky on this solder joint area, and a separating disc can be used to remove it and the soldering lugs. The solder joint can be formed also with a separating disc. A saw can be used to further form the connector and polish this area. Being careful to stay away from the margins. The bridge then is tried back on the model and the occlusion is checked. It's checked with shim stock and articulating paper. You should see the centric stop areas. If these are not correct, it is adjusted at this time until the occlusion is correct. It's important when polishing to stay away from these centric stop areas. Here we are using an automatic chuck and a sand disc to further refine the margins and the contour on the lingual surface. A rubber wheel is used here to further polish this inner proximal and lingual surface. The rubber wheel has been sharpened so it will fit into this inner proximal area. All accessible margins are polished with this rubber wheel. BBC compound in a Robinson bristle brush can be used to further polish the margins and the inner proximal and the solder joint area. It's important to leave the dies in the bridge. This makes handling of the bridge much easier with less risk of damaging a very fragile margin. The brush is rotated from gold to dye. Another technique of polishing the solder joint area is to use a string with BBC compound. The bridge then is rubbed against the string with the polishing compound to polish the connector area. A rag wheel impregnated with BBC compound can be used for polishing the lingual surfaces and the margins. Care must be taken not to polish out the centric stops, and care must be taken not to let the rotating rag wheel grasp the bridge and bend it. Rouge is applied to a chamois wheel, and this is used to apply the final polish on the bridge. Again, care must be taken not to polish out the centric stops, and care must be taken not to catch the bridge in the wheel and dislodge it and bend it. The polish should be a very high-grade polish with no scratches remaining on the gold castings. The bridge is tried back on the model, and the centric stops are rechecked with articulating paper and shim stock. If these are correct and the bridge is highly polished, we are ready for the cementation procedure.
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.